Hello, everybody. Welcome to your Monday message of mental health with me, Dr. Jen, and the Rose Center for Learning. This week, it is all about this time of year. We're ramping up for our season of holidays, no matter what holiday you participate in in the month of December, if you do. It probably has something to do with gifts. And this is a season where we can get all excited about both receiving gifts, which is fun, and giving gifts to other people, which is really fun, hair more fun than receiving usually. Um, and it's a time that we're um, focused on other people. And that can be good, right? Focus on other people is a really great way for us not to get all too focused on ourselves, which can lead to problems. But what I find at this time of year is that most of the people that I work with are forgetting themselves entirely, and it's all about everybody else. And so this year, what I wanted to talk about is the greatest gift that you can give yourself. So this week's Monday message is all about the gift of gratitude. Gratitude is something we could talk about for hours, days, probably weeks on end, because it is number one, incredibly important, but also there are multi facets and um, avenues to talk about when we're talking about it. It's a big topic. Um, so I'm gonna sum it down today to just say, sum it down, sum it up. I'm gonna sum it, that's a mountain. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna just like boil it down. That's the phrase I wanted. Why do I say phrases? I never say them right. I'm gonna boil it down to uh, the essential things that I think that would be helpful for you this week. And that is why gratitude is a gift that you can give yourself. Although there are many gifts that you can get from gratitude, the biggest gift that you're gonna give yourself through gratitude is a better perception of what's going on in your world. It's very easy to get stuck in the things that aren't working well. It's very easy to get stuck in all of the things that you wish were different about yourself. It's very easy to look in the mirror and see all the things that you wish could change or things that you feel guilty about or things you might even feel shame about. It's also easy to look at the world and just see barrier after barrier and conflict and challenge and um, being pushed back, being pushed down, being pushed aside, just being pushed. Lots of pressure from all areas of our lives and things like all that 2020 has thrown at us, the unforeseen, the unpredictable, the things that make us have to pivot. And all of that is exhausting and also can lead us to feeling pretty badly about not only ourselves, but the world around. Right now in 2020, we're supremely being tested on this because it just seems like it's going on forever, this pandemic. We, even though there's light at the end of the tunnel, that was the right phrase, um, it's still just seeming like it's going to go on forever and people are worried about the winter and not being able to be outside and the lack of connection. I could go on and on about the worries that we're all experiencing, right? And so it's very easy to get stuck in all of that and to feel like, whoa, 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 whoa. And that whoa can lead us to behaviors that aren't necessarily so great, like Maybe you're drinking more often or turning to drugs more often as a way of coping. Maybe you are eating more as a way of coping. Maybe you've taken away all of your wonderful exercise habits and say, oh, the gyms are closed. I'm not gonna do it anymore. And you are becoming more sloth-like. Maybe you aren't giving yourself the sleep that you deserve because you're your schedule is all sort of out of whack. And so you're not sleeping at the same schedule and that can lead to misery. Um, there are so many ways that we cope and some are positive and some are more negative. Some are immediately positive, but end up being negative and some are just negative. So the idea of all of this is that when you are trying to look at what's going on in your world and the world around you and your piece of that and your connection to that, gratitude is something that can enhance your mental health because it takes you out of that perspective of woe is me and woe is the world. But instead it comes at it from the perspective that your life is a gift, is full of many smaller gifts. And even when everything is falling apart, there are always things that you can be grateful for. It's just a shift in perspective. And when you can do that, when you teach yourself how to do that, when you can be grateful for something, even in the midst of terrible things happening, what that allows you to do is it allows you to lift yourself out of what's not working and gives you just even a moment of feeling happy and satisfied and fulfilled by the part, even if it's small, that is working. And by doing that, it does two things. 
One, it helps you to balance out your views so you're not negative all the time. And two, what's working, what's positive in your life is way more motivating than what's not working. We actually tend to, to change our behavior going towards something that is working rather than away from something that isn't working. We do both, but we have more success typically when we are looking towards why I want more of that. That feels good. I want to do that again. That is more rewarding. So the positive reinforcement is more rewarding than the negative reinforcement. And so because we know that, the more you um, uh, acknowledge what you're grateful for, the more you're going to say, oh, I want more of that. I'm going to keep on fighting for that. If it's all negative all the time, too easy to give up, right? It's too easy to be like, I'm not even going to try to change that because it's just not going to work anyway. And nothing's working. And everything is just bad, right? So that attitude, even if it's well-deserved, because there are lots of things that are challenging you, you still want to maintain and work hard to get that balanced attitude because it's those positive things that are going to make you want to get more and try harder and try new things and connect to people who can help you. Not only does it cheer us up in the ways that I mentioned, but physiologically, you can look at your brain and your brain is different when you are exercising this gratitude. So if if we were looking at fMRIs that showed your brain all lit up and all of the activity of what was happening at any particular point in time, when you are actively um, working with your gratitude and feeling grateful, you can see the impact on the brain. It's pretty remarkable. So this is what, how science is able to show us what we feel is true. When we are focusing on gratitude, we feel better. And that feeling better can trickle down into all sorts of other areas. It starts with gratitude. And that's why I say it's the gift that keeps on giving because that attitude shift, allowing gratitude to come in, making it be a focus, that then can lead to all sorts of better decision-making in different areas of your life that also increase your happiness and it just keeps on giving. Not to mention that it's, it can rub off on other people too, which then creates a happier community around you. So all with you just giving yourself this gift of gratitude. So how do you do it? It's not that hard. You take out a piece of paper or your phone or whatever you like to write on and you make a daily commitment to yourself uh, that you are going to write down things that you're grateful for. And the more you do this, the more you get used to it and the more you can kind of see the angles. But also often it helps to talk to somebody who's really skilled at making gratitude lists, whether that's a professional or whether that's someone you have in your life who's been doing this for a long time, um, because it does, there's a little bit of an art to it. But when you look at things that are really not working well, name anything that's not working well in your life. And I would say, try to find some sort of silver lining, even if 90% of it is awful. What's 10% that actually is not that terrible that might be a good lesson or good practice, um, that kind of thing. So for example, I was just working with somebody who is finally decided to pull the plug on her marriage. So, and the ability for her to stand up, no matter how long it took her, for her to stand up and say, I deserve better. I don't want this anymore. That was a gift that her bad marriage gave her. And she would be, she could be grateful for that. I'm grateful that I'm standing up today and I'm saying, no, I want something better for my life. So it might be that it's like the most difficult boss you could imagine. How on earth are you gonna do this job with this boss hovering over you and doing all these terrible boss things? And then you might say to yourself, well, as much as I really dislike this boss, what it's teaching me is what I want for a future boss. I'm gonna make a list of all the qualities that I have right now that aren't working so that when I do eventually move to another job, I'm gonna have a list of things that are really important that I wanna make sure that I get with the next boss. Right. So it might be that you all of a sudden are unemployed and you have no ability to buy presents, you have no ability to get groceries, you have no ability to create the life or continue and maintain the life that you've created for yourself. And that's absolutely terrifying. So you might say to yourself, well, I don't have all of these things I used to have, but I have my health and not everybody has their health. And I'm just going to focus on the fact that I'm healthy right now. Or you might say, okay, well, I don't have 
anything that I used to have before, but I have an amazing community that's rallying around me and that's going to support me. Or I have things in place in this, in this town that I live in that will help me through. And I'm grateful for those. Or I'm grateful that I'm not going to lose hope, that I will always find hope even if I don't see where it's going to come from. I believe, I have faith that things are going to turn around and my faith is going to pull me through. So that's the idea is no matter what is going on in your world, there's always a way for you to be able to feel grateful. And that's going to be the difference between a bad situation pulling you under into despair or a bad situation motivating you to hold on and see the hope in the future, even if you can't see how it's going to work itself out. In the short term, while all of this stuff is happening around you, it can literally make you feel better. In the long term, it can motivate you to make changes or to seek out changes that will really improve your life. So this is what gratitude can do. It's a powerful, powerful tool. The more you do it, the more it works for you. And that's why I suggest that you do it every day. But if you're one of those people where the second you're told to do something every day, you're like, I'm out. I don't like it. Don't let that dissuade you. Or if you're the kind of person who's like, oh, every day I'm going to do it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And for about four days. And then you're like, what was I supposed to do again? I don't really want to do that. It's boring. So know yourself. Okay. And then you prescribe what will work for you. If you work well with regiments and I'm going to do this every day as part of my practice, then that's what you do. If you do it once a week, then that's what you do. If you do it intermittently when the, when it suits you, then that's what you do. It, it, the idea is not how, how often you do it. The idea is that you do it for yourself and you give that gift as often as you possibly can. And the more you do it, the more you will see how your perspective is shifting for everything around you. And you will start to feel better and feel more in command and feel more hopeful about being able to change things. And um, also to, to, to highlight the things that don't need to be changed that are already working. Yay, those are important. Uh, so this season, while you are trying so hard to make 2020 still amazing for the people around you, don't forget about yourself. Give yourself the gift of gratitude. You really, really deserve it. That is your Monday message of mental health for this week. As always, if you want to continue the conversation, please reach out to us at the Rose Center for Learning. And as always, share this message and all of our messages with anyone that you know of in your life that you think could use them. We thank you for tuning in today and have a wonderful week. See you next time.